Do you have a license? You better. Government often demands licenses before you're allowed to work. People think this is a good idea. We license drivers. We license dogs. People think it makes us safer. But licensing also does something bad. If people want to work, let them work. 11-year-old Madison Root was told she could not work because she didn't have a license. She wanted money for braces, so she tried selling mistletoe. Here she is in a tree, picking it. But when she went to sell it at this outdoor market, police told her, stop, that's illegal. They told her she could beg, but she can't sell anything. So her father sent us this video. I was amazed that people cannot work hard, but they can be just lazy. I assume that's not exactly what the cops meant, but the fact is, all over America, people want to work, but can't because it's so hard to get proper licenses. In the 1950s, well, only about 1 in 20 Americans needed the government's blessing to do their job. Today, that number is more than 1 in 3. This new book, Bottleneckers, reveals how licensing rules allow older businesses to profit by keeping newcomers out. These are people who want to erect barriers, who want to put in place bottlenecks because they want to keep competitors out. It's kind of like what happens on a highway if you close a lane. The established existing businesses are like these motorcycles. Licenses don't slow them down. During my consumer reporter days, I assumed licenses protected us from scams like these. We are not ripping that. people off. But licensing doesn't stop that. Georgia funeral director who was pitching dead bodies out in the woods behind his funeral establishment. He was licensed. Bernie Madoff was licensed. Teachers in public schools who have sex with their students, licensed. Licensing doesn't stop that. What licensing does do is crush new entrepreneurs. <laughs> Want to braid people's hair? This woman was told she couldn't do it legally unless she spent thousands of hours to get a cosmetology license. She begged the government, just let me braid. I was making these phone calls to the Board of Cosmetology saying, I don't want to do cosmetology. All I want to do is braid hair. No, not without our license, said the Cosmetology Board. These are people who have a clear conflict of interest. Of course they do. She wants to compete with them. Cosmetologists got together and they went to the legislature and they lobbied for the creation of a license. Makes me wonder, how could I get rid of my competition? I'm annoyed by all these TV channels. <laughs> I'd like to limit that. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. So and what you need to do, John, is that you need to go to the government and ask for special protection. You need to claim that there's some public interest, some way that the public is going to be protected by limiting the number of providers. And that actually happened in America. When I started in TV, most viewers just had ABC, CBS, NBC, and boring public television people could have had many more channels. Cable TV technology was available. But lobbyists for my employer argued, no, that'll hurt poor people. They need broadcast TV. They can't afford cable. So the FCC limited cable TV for years. And that helped me make more money. <laughs> Certainly it does. That's the effect of licensing. That is, the people who are in the industry have the ability to artificially inflate prices and their wages as a result. And consumers are worse off. I was better off. You were much better off, but now we realize everyone else was worse off. That's what the bottleneck does. It limits choices, thereby raising prices and enriching older businesses. There are so many bottlenecks. We'll show you a bunch in the next episodes. We'll also show you how these problems can be better solved by the free market. Market regulation actually is enough for the vast majority of occupations out there. Bottleneckers around America, they make life worse for you. Thank <laughs> you.